In this video, we're going to talk about measures of central tendency. So measures of central tendency are uh, numbers, calculations of numbers, that um, characterize a group of people. So either a sample of people, like uh, what's shown here, or a population of people. Um, and there are three measures of central tendency. There's the mean, the median, and the mode. So the mean, median, and mode are all, as measures of central tendency, they are a single number that captures the sampler population on a particular variable. So if we're looking at height of a group of people, like the people shown here, um, we might get the mean height of those people, uh, or the median height, or the mode. So first we're going to talk about the mean. So the mean is represented by this x bar. x bar is how you refer to the mean of a sample as opposed to the mean of a population, but we'll talk about that later. So for now, uh, the mean is x bar, and um, that equals the sum of all of the numbers in your um, set. So however many numbers there are, so we'll indicate that by going uh, all the way to x sub n. n is the total number of um, data points that you are uh, calculating the mean for. So that's all over n, which again is the total number of data points um, for which you're calculating the mean. And so um, this top part here, the sum of all the numbers, is also written like this sigma. Um, so that indicates the sum of all the x's, okay, and that's over n. So uh, just so you know, that's another way of showing the sum of a set of numbers. So we're going to calculate the mean for a small set of numbers. Okay, so here are our five numbers, and we're going to calculate the mean for those numbers. So what do we do first? So we say x bar, as we saw above, equals the sum of all the numbers, okay, over the total number of numbers. So we've got one, two, three, four, five numbers. So it's the sum of all the numbers over five, which equals 25 over 5. And that, of course, equals 5. So the mean x bar of this sample is 5. So the mean is what's usually used um, to characterize a, a group of, um, you know, a set of data on a single <coughs> variable. But there are some limitations to the mean, which are illustrated by this um, joke, uh, Bill Gates walks into a bar. So um, the way this works is you have a bunch of people um, sitting in a bar, like these people, and let's just say there are seven people in the bar. And then we want to calculate uh, the average salary of the people in this bar. Okay. So what we do, of course, um, to figure out the average salary, let's say there are seven people in the bar, Okay, and th these are the people, and here are their salaries. So what we do is we add up um, all the salaries. So each one of these, as we discussed before, is an x. So each, ver uh, each observation is called an x, right? So you've got, this is a 4, etc. okay? So this is x sub 7. All right, so that's... And as we saw before, uh, to calculate the mean, the mean is um, equals the sum of all the x's over n, which is the sample size or the total number of um, people in your sample. Okay, so this equals the sum of all of these salaries equals three. Oops. 
315,000 over uh, N, which is the number of observations there, which is 7, and that equals 45,000. So now Bill Gates walks into the bar, and we're going to add his salary to the list of salaries, so we'll have eight salaries. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the mean um, with uh, including Bill Gates' salary. So that, so we've got, um, we add up all of the uh, salary, so we take the 315 that we had before and we just add the billion of that Bill Gates has to that and then we now divide by 8 because we have 8 people. Okay, and then so what that equals is 125,039,375. So now that Bill Gates has walked into the bar, the average salary of the people in the bar has gone up dramatically. In fact, this number, 125 million average, it would be completely inappropriate um, to assume, for example, that um, you know the the average person in the bar is a millionaire, right? And so, <clears throat> because Bill Gates' salary is so completely different uh, and more extreme than anyone else's in the bar. Bill Gates salary Bill Gates in this case is considered an outlier. So in general when you have an outlier in your sample an extreme value on the dimension that you're measuring the mean is not a good measure because um, the outlier will pull the mean to the extreme and therefore the mean will not be a good representation of the overall um, sample. So the joke here, uh, in case you missed it, I didn't really tell the punchline, is that Bill Gates walks into a bar and suddenly everyone in the bar is a millionaire. So obviously that's not true. Um, but anyway, so this, this joke about Bill Gates walking into the bar, whether you find it funny or not, shows that uh, the, the mean is not a great representative uh, in, the case, in a case in which um, there's an outlier. So the uh, median is the measure of central tendency that we're, we will use in, the case, in a case in which the data have outliers. So the median is the middle value in a sample. Um, it's the value uh, at which 50% of the sample is, falls below that value and 50% of the sample falls above the value. So in order to calculate the median, we need to arrange our um, data in order, okay? So in numeric order. So I've rearranged those salaries that we had before. So of course Bill Gates is at the bottom or top, as it were, uh, and then they're all arranged, you know, smallest to largest, okay? And then we take the middle value. So in this case we have eight uh, numbers, and so the middle, there is no specific middle value. So to calculate the mean in this sample, we're going to um, take the average of these two values, okay, to get the, you know, what's the number in the middle of the uh, central two values. And so um, that's easy. We already learned how to take the average. So in this case, it's just um, 42,000. 500. Okay, so that value is the one at which 50% fall below and 50% fall above. So, despite the fact that we have this um, outlier here, okay, which when we calculated the average pulled the average way, way, way beyond the uh, range um, in which most of these salaries fell. Now the the median value 42,500 is much more representative of the sample at large. And so in general when you have uh, data sets in which there are 
outliers, um, the median is, is a better measure of the central tendency. So often you will see medians reported for salaries instead of averages because of this Bill Gates phenomenon. So finally we have the mode, and the mode is simply the, um, the observation, the value in the data set that's the most common. Okay, so here's our salary data once again, and um, so we've got right here, ev there's um, two people who have a salary of 30000 so in this case 30000 would be the mode. Often the mode isn't useful because um, sometimes there are two modes, so in other words, um, you know, if um, Sandra had a salary of 45000 then there would be two people with a value of forty-five thousand, or two people with forty-five thousand and two people with thirty thousand. So there would be two modes in this data set. And then another, in another scenario, commonly there, uh, there's only one value, uh, one uh, observation of each value. So if you're measuring something like weight to a certain number of decimal points, you may not have more than one person at any given weight. So um, the mode is useful with categorical data, which you learned about uh, before, like um, gender or religion or something like that, where you can't really calculate a number. There's no numerical value associated with the variable, but you might want to know um, what is the predominant religion, say, in the sample. So uh, that was a brief description of the three measures of central tendency that are used in um, characterizing a set of data. So again, we have the mean, which is also uh, known as the average, and this is the most common um, set measure of central tendency used in a data set, particularly with quantitative variables, interval and ratio variables. However, as we saw, the mean is sensitive to outliers, and if there are outliers in the data, the mean is not going to be a good representation of the central tendency of the data set. So in that case, we'll use a median, which is the midpoint um, in the sample, uh, at which 50% are over and 50% are under. And then finally, there's the mode, which is um, most commonly used for um, qualitative data, nominal uh, and ordinal data. And that's it for central tendency.